in studio here for the Sheriff's Sit Down, brought to you by our community credit union. We're talking with Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, also, also Sergeant Jeff Rhodes. Good morning to you guys. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good. Thanks for coming in and talking with us about things that are going on. Uh, first things first, it has continued, although this week uh, is likely to get a little cooler. It has continued to be hot out there. And I know you guys are working closely with uh, fire officials as well on some of these fires around the area. How are we looking on a Monday morning? It's a little cooler out there, but that doesn't get us anywhere out of the woodwork. I talked to Chief Patty that you've had on here as a guest numerous times and and was asking about when be, when becomes the time that there'll be any, any reduction in sure. the fire danger. He told me it takes significant rain for um, a long period of time, not not just a few days, but a long period of time before we'll even start to bring that back down. It's just, it's so dry all the way down in the ground that, that things can burn across the roots and things. So we're still at a very, very high fire danger. Is this heat uh, starting to impact the residents and how they interact with each other? <laughs> yes, I always tell you about the 70 degree rule every year about voting. Diplomatic when I ask these questions, I see a great smirk on your face. Voting there, in Jeff. the 70. I, I always tell you the 70 degree rule. Once it starts, it dries up people's brain cells. I think then it starts gets over 70 degrees around here, and the weather and the temperature starts creeping up. I think right now that we're on track to have. We, we have had by far right now the most number of calls that we've had for service in 24 hour periods that we've ever seen. Wow, and we have you know, 15 less people to deal with it. I mean, the calls are just stacked up and it's running 24 seven like that. Where are some, and I know we've talked over the over the years and uh, especially when it comes to increase uh, times where there's people congregating and things like that. Obviously law enforcement is the ones who need to be uh, in there to uh, make sure there's no problems happening. Uh, but if people are in certain portions of the county they may uh, come across groups of folks who are partying a little too hard or not paying attention to some of the rules where are some of those hot button zones uh, for folks to either stay away from or just know that they may be there uh, i know a lot of folks go swimming up at the different lakes and things like that well i Jeff can probably think of a lot of them too. I think one that comes up constantly almost every day of the week this time of year is Party Rock at Lake Cushman. Mm. It's been a favorite for for years and will continue to be, but every year we end up with people injured up there either jumping off the rock and landing on the rocks below in the water. They're just underneath the surface or, surface or uh, just tensions running high and people fighting over things up there. Um, a number of the campgrounds, you're just taking you're just taking a number of people and putting them to a smaller area. They're just a microcosm of the community is what a campground is. Uh, most of the time our rangers handle that, but you know, we get in a situation where it gets to be too many people and, and they fight about the oddest things, you know, mm -hmm. in, in those campgrounds. And pretty soon, you know, we send a car all the way out to Lake Cushman way up on the backside, if they're up to one of the campgrounds and the distances that we're covering out to those places, those, uh, they're, they're a little more rural. Yeah. Um, once you get out there and handle the calls out there, you're backed up more calls somewhere else. Uh, Jeff, can you give us any sort of, if, if, you know, if you feel comfortable explaining these sort of de-escalation tactics, I'm at Party Rock, I'm there, I am intent to have a good time, but there's some Yahoo who wants everyone to have a poor time. What are some ways that someone can um, not aggressively de-escalate a situation or just get away from the situation? Getting away is exactly what we would recommend to people. You know, certainly you can try the diplomatic approach, talking to somebody, but it seems like you get to a certain point, if that person has taken it to the level to where, and it's usually due to some type of intoxication, whether sure. it be chemical or uh, from alcohol, sometimes diplomacy just isn't going to work they're intent on doing what they want to do removing yourself from the situation is the best thing okay. and certainly um calling call 911 and we want everybody to be able to go up and have a good time everybody should be able to go up and have a good time get along have fun and just be smart and safe about it um we've had a number of incidents up there over the years that um have escalated into some pretty <clears throat> pretty serious assaults and that's due to, you know, somebody 
going over the top and other people trying to intervene and then it just gets it gets ugly from there so like i said diplomacy try talking to them try to you know encouraging them that everybody's there to have fun yeah. and have and get along but if certainly if that doesn't work just back away sure uh, get back to an area where you have cell service and give us a call sure sure what else can we think about, uh, Sheriff, when we're out on the waters? As I know it's going to be cooler this week, but still a lot of folks come into town. And as the, we have about a month left before the end of summer and folks will be getting back to the grind of their daily lives, uh, what are some ways that we can just, I don't know, be better to each other? I, I don't know. It's it's really hard to, to explain this or come up with a good question to, to say, Stop being a jerk to everybody. People tend to want to congregate at the favorite places, which generally are along the water when it's warm out. <clears throat> I guess for me, every once in a while, I'm reminded that we're not the only place that has problems. I've been down to Ocean Shores recently sure. and watched the number of people lined up. And then you get one guy on the beach where there's little kids walking around that are racing up and down and they're in their, in their trucks slide around and, and things like that. It just just absolutely reckless. <clears throat> we have those same kind of things, you know, wherever people congregate. Uh, for those kind of things it seems like there's always going to be one in the crowd and i think sometimes like like the sergeant said is sometimes just stay either staying away or or moving away from that is the best thing to do because there's some people you're just not going to change their mind their, their, their minds are made up if they're going to go they 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 woke up that morning maybe looking for something okay interesting what else can you talk to us about as we move through um, uh, august well jeff's here and i really wanted to just talk a little bit about where we're at on this fire situation and, yeah. and you know we've had some concerns about um, how some of the fires have started in our county and we're working with our fire chiefs and, and DNR and, and, um, and the rest of us working together to solve uh, some of these issues um, there were some things there that you know we worked on last week and you had some questions regarding you know the suspicious fires and things and, yeah. and so I thought we'd have Jeff come on and talk for a moment well, it's always busy. See, that's what happens here. here you go, it never you have to ends. go do anything. No, you're yeah, okay. I'll be all right. That's what happens here. So, Sergeant Rhodes, uh, kind of talk to us a little bit about there was uh, just, I think, everybody uh, here in uh, the sheriff's office with their uh, comments on suspicious fires and maybe just realizing that, wow, there is a lot of fires going on and it has been in a real kind of clustered area uh, and it doesn't seem to be happening in other parts of the state. So is that kind of what leads you guys to then think about maybe there's someone involved in this? Or? Yeah, so this whole thing kicked off for us a little over two weeks ago. We were contacted by DNR investigators um, who were concerned with the number of fires that we were having and the fact that uh, a number of those fires looked to be suspicious in nature and how they had started. Okay. <clears throat> so that caused us to really sit down and start crunching numbers and looking at the amount of fires that we had and sitting down with DNR and bringing in um, on the fire chiefs. Uh, the sheriff called a meeting here two weeks ago now to where we brought all of the involved parties in. Uh, most of the fire chiefs from the districts within the county were able to attend. Uh, the DNR investigators were there. We were there and we had tracked over a seven week period a large number of fires that was out of the ordinary and out of the norm for us and for this area and the fact that of those fires there were a large number of them that appeared suspicious in nature and how they had started and were suspected as possibly being arson fires um it was it was a great meeting it was nice to have everybody there all the stakeholders there and we really made some progress in being able to set up the timeline and try to identify dates times if there was any types of patterns or anything from that meeting we developed um, a list of fires that uh, we felt were suspicious and of those we have some that we suspect are arson certainly and it's caused it's allowed us to really kind of focus our efforts in specific areas because like you said we do have specific areas of the county where we've seen a number of these yeah. and unfortunately in the last two weeks since that meeting we've had still yet another number of fires uh, suspicious fires in those areas but we're looking into all of them and we're making some progress um, uh, we haven't made any arrests at this point in time but that is certainly the goal is we intend on finding out how these are starting and if they are being intentionally started by a person a group of people however um, hopefully you, getting in and holding them accountable 
do you also get the sense of, and it, maybe you have had these, but maybe you haven't, um, call-ins on false fires? May, if there is, as I had heard reports of people calling in uh, potential fires, just seeing smoke or something in one area, turns out nothing is going on there. Does that divert resources away? Or have you gotten to that point of the investigation? I am. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Personally, I'm only aware of one such incident, and that was this weekend. And the person that called it in had seen a, a smoke call, and they'd actually photographed it. And when the firefighters um, showed up, they couldn't locate anything. Huh. I would certainly, we're urging everybody in the public, you know, if you see something, say something. If you see a fire, if you see smoke, call 911 immediately um, we are further uh, asking people if you we've had a number of fires um, set right alongside the roadway or start right alongside the roadway and they're getting called in by concerned citizens and what we're asking people is if you do come across a fire and law enforcement and or firefighters aren't on scene if you can first of all that what we need you to do is call 911 and make the report and from that point, if you can safely take some pictures or take some video of the fire, please do that because that helps the investigators really kind of key in on where the fire started, gives us an idea of where we need to start looking for potential evidence. Also, who knows, you might catch somebody coming out of the woods, you might catch a car coming by that could lead to, you know, certainly point us in a direction of the suspect. Sure, so many folks now with their cameras and their on board dash cameras and motorcycle cams and things like that. You never know what you may have come across if you happen to be in that area. We're just about out of time here this morning, guys, so we'll let you out, but good conversations. We'll continue on again next Monday if, with the Sheriff's Sit Down, brought to you by our community credit union. Sergeant Rhodes, uh, Sheriff Salisbury, good to see you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on.